Let's face it, for the second game in a row, a lot of things went wrong for the Kraken in this one. But at least one thing went right. Very, very right. What's Kraken, everybody, and welcome back to Kraken r, &R where the Seattle Kraken lose 4-2 to a Montreal Canadiens team that they should definitely have beat. I mean, sure, if you want to go based on expectations at the beginning of the season, then maybe this is a pretty close matchup. But based on how things have been going to this point in the season so far, with the unexpectedly great start for the Kraken, this is definitely a game the Kraken, especially at home, should have felt pretty good about getting two points in. Not that the Habs are a pushover or anything, they've actually had a pretty decent start to their season as well, but still, this is... Well, it wasn't a great game for Seattle. Let's face it though, there's only one reason most of you are here in the first place, and that gets us into the lineup changes for the Kraken this game, as there's two on the forward end with Morgan Geeky coming back from injury, and Shane Wright coming back from his stint at the AHL where he did have four goals in the five games there. And of course, while still looking for his first NHL goal, he comes back just in time to face the team that most people thought a few months ago he would be playing for. And he wasn't just back in the normal role that we've seen him playing in up until this point, centering that fourth line getting five, six, seven, maybe eight minutes of ice time at most. No, they had him slotted into the center role on the third line, which is the biggest role that he's played in up until this point this season, having previously only ever been on the wing of that third line once in spot for McCann earlier on in the season. And while his just over 11 minutes of ice time in this game are second in his career in a single game to the almost 14 minutes that he had in that game against Minnesota, none of those minutes came in garbage time, quote unquote, like they did in that one. And as far as how he played in those 11 minutes of ice time, well, let's just say that that time he spent at the AHL level clearly seems to have made a difference, at least one game into his return. As we get into the game as a whole though, it really was not a terribly interesting start to this one. Sure, the Kraken do get a bit of a press in the first few minutes, but even that they don't have terribly dangerous opportunities out of. So by the time we reach the halfway point of the first period, hardly anything notable has happened in this game. I mean, I guess the Habs did have a power play around the halfway point of the period, but even on that, they don't even get a shot attempt on goal, much less an actual shot. So by the time we get into the back half of the first, we're still looking for the first real action of this game. And it doesn't take long to get it, as the Kraken, right out of that power play, press hard into the offensive end and get back-to-back -back shifts where they not only almost make it one to nothing, they almost make it two to nothing. And to be honest, if we had gotten the same Jake Allen that the Habs have seen for most of the season so far, who has not really had a great start to his season, it probably would have been two to nothing. First, it's a very good play from the second line that gets a shot from, well, a pass from behind the net out in front for a shot from Beneers, and he gets absolutely robbed by Allen, an open shot from the slot, again set up well from behind the net. Allen comes up big there, and then as the Kraken hold the offensive zone, they're able to get a change and the third line's out on the ice, and wouldn't you know it, pretty much the same situation sets up. Gord gets a pass out front for right, right in the slot, right fires off the shot, and Allen comes up with an even better save on this right shot, just getting his toe to it and keeping right from getting his first NHL goal to make it one to nothing. And then, of course, wouldn't you know it, but right back the other way, just after Allen comes up with those back-to-back -back absolute robberies on two great attempts from the two Seattle rookie centers, but a relatively harmless shot from up in the corner gets right past Jones and into the back of the net. Now, at first glance, it did look like it may have glanced off of the shin of Burakovsky as it was headed towards the net, which maybe that tip would have explained how it gets past Jones, but no, once again, it pretty much just goes straight past Jones. It's really not even that hard of a shot that comes from the point. Just hard enough to get to the net and over the pad of Jones, who really has to come up with a save there. And the Habs are on the board first. A couple minutes later, though, the Kraken, looking to respond, press back into the offensive end. And yes, it's that third line centered by Wright. They get the puck down along the boards behind Montreal's net, where Yanni Gord makes a very nice forechecking play to separate one of the Habs players from the puck behind the net. Gets it quickly up to Bjorkstrand. Bjorkstrand out to right in the slot. Right fires the shot. And there it is. Save the puck. He buries it into the back of the net for his first NHL goal. And of course, it comes against the Habs. Woo! What a moment. And yes, I know. I know what you all are thinking. This is one of the most predictable goals ever scored. Of course, Shane Wright, who had all these expectations coming into the season and then isn't getting ice time. He's healthy scratched. Then all of a sudden he's sent down to the AHL but he's going to come back just in time to play his first game against the Habs, still looking for his NHL goal. Obviously, he's going to score it against them. And sure enough, it happens just as everyone predicted. I mean, sometimes things like this are predictable because they're just too good and perfect not to happen. 
Maybe that's not how Habs fans see it, but still. I mean, look, just as an example, if you've seen Shawshank Redemption, while things are not going particularly well for Handy for most of the movie, it's still not the most unpredictable ending that he ends up escaping. Still doesn't make it one of the best endings to one of the best movies of all time, though. Not really sure why that's the analogy I decided to go with, but anyway, you get my point. Just because it was predictable didn't make it any less fun and any less something we're going to remember for a long time to come. And as far as Wright's concerned, something he'll remember for the rest of his life. Really, the only problem with this goal is that it wasn't a game winner towards the end of the third period. As we do now still have two periods left to play and even a little bit still left in the first. But now that Wright has his goal against the Habs, I think we can just pack things up there and call it a night. Unfortunately, though, that's not quite how things work, so... <sighs> There is still the rest of the game that happens. The Kraken do end up getting a power play right after this goal from right, but while they are able to hold the offensive zone for most of that time, they don't convert that into a lot of shots on goal or scoring opportunities, so it doesn't go anywhere, and we get to the end of the first with the score tied at one. So we come into the second with, you know, still a pretty good feeling in the building after what happened in the first. However, that's quickly erased as a few minutes in, Burakovsky commits one of the worst turnovers we've seen all season, throwing the puck into the middle of the ice where Suzuki just turns around, says thank you very much, takes it right down the middle of the ice, and instead of shooting it, just passes it off to the side where, of course, Cole Caulfield is waiting, and he puts it in past Jones to make it 2-1. to one. Okay, I mean, that was frustrating, but it's just one defensive break. Ten, it's nothing the Kraken can't come back from. There's still plenty of time left in the game, and it was only the fifth shot on goal they've allowed. And wait, what are you guys doing? No, no, ah, you've got to be freaking kidding me! Seven seconds later, and the puck's right back in the back of the net again. Three to one Habs. Right off the ensuing faceoff after their last colossal defensive mistake, the puck ends up out towards the boards where, of course, it's one towards the Kraken end of the ice, which somehow catches four of the five Kraken players completely off guard and flat-footed, and it quickly turns into a two-on-one just after the faceoff. Susie's the only guy back for the Kraken. The pass gets across and into the back of the net. Again, just seven seconds later, it's two back-to-back -back terrible mistakes by the Kraken, and both of them are into the back of the net. And for the Habs, six shots in, it's three to one there advantage. Now, at least for the Kraken, I guess, after giving up these two back-to-back -back absolutely brutal goals, they do end up with a power play, which they get a couple of pretty good scoring opportunities on. It's certainly a better power play than the first one, but they still don't end up scoring on it. And while they do hold the Habs to not a shot, I think, for 10 consecutive minutes through the middle part of the second period, which does actually include a second power play for the Habs in the game, as we get to the end of the period, the Habs end up getting a third power play, now, this one, again, the Kraken are able to kill off by virtue of going to 4-on-4 four four as Tanev draws another call to send it to 4-on-4. Four four. But of course, while going to 4-on-4 four four would seem like a good thing because it takes one of the worst penalty kill units in the NHL to this point in the season off of the ice, in that 4-on-4 four four time, once again, the Kraken make yet another absolutely horrendously brutal defensive mistake as they have the puck in the offensive end, eventually they lose possession of it, and while the Habs are taking the puck down the ice the other way, McCann and Beniers go off for a pretty ill-advised change, which leads to a 3-on-2 opportunity, and with still just three guys out on the ice for the Kraken, that 3-on-2 opportunity finds the back of the net, and it's 4-1. to one. And of course, just to rub salt into the wound, this now fourth goal for the Habs here towards the end of the second period comes on just their eighth shot on goal of the game. And well, yes, again, the three goals here in the second period for the Habs and three of their four in the game have come pretty much just handed to them on a silver platter by terrible defense by the Kraken. It's also true that no matter how you got there, no matter how you want to slice it, allowing four goals on eight shots is just terrible goaltending. Again, left out to dry for three of them, but you have to come up with a save on at least one or two of those. And again, the first one was one that you already needed a save on anyway. Would saves on any of these last three goals be highlight reel worthy saves? Yes, absolutely. But again, you need to make a couple of those if you want to win games, like we've already seen at the other end of the ice in Allen. So now, with just about a minute left in the second period, it's 4-1 to Habs, and while the Kraken do have most of the rest of this last minute on the power play, they aren't able to score on that. However... Mercifully, in the final literal second of this second period, Burakovsky's able to get a shot off at the goal or more just throws the puck towards the net and McCann with a very nice tip puts it right through the five hole of Allen and into the back of the net 
to make it four to two and at least make this third period interesting. Or I guess at least give the Kraken an opportunity to make the third period interesting. And so following McCann's now 12th of the season, the puck is dropped at center ice, burning off the remaining 10th of a second that was left in the second period. And we head to the third where to Seattle's credit, they do press really hard trying to make it three to four in the first couple minutes here in this third period. But once again, Allen is a brick wall in net for the Habs. Just having, I guess, the game of his season so far, suddenly in this game of all games, again, if he had played like the Allen the Habs have had up until this point in the season, Seattle probably would have ended up winning this game 5-4 to four in regulation, if not at least getting it to overtime. But again, Allen has a couple more absolute highlight reel saves left in him. One in particular on a breakaway from Gord that was set up by a very nice pass by Wright setting up Gord for that breakaway. Gord is able to beat Allen, it looks like, but just as Gord's able to get Allen to commit to one side of the net, getting him to slide from one side of the net to the other, and then putting the shot on goal back on that other side, Allen is able to get his stick to the ice, eventually making the save with the handle of his stick, and not only does the handle make the initial save, but even then the puck looks like it might have slid in, until the knob of his stick at the end slides across and hits the puck just enough to slide into his pad, where he's able to freeze it and prevent Gord from scoring and right from getting an assist. As we get into the back half of the third period, things do start to slow down a little bit for the Kraken, and so, I mean, nothing really has happened for the Habs all period. Even still, it's Seattle that needs to make up two goals, and the Habs are perfectly happy just playing turtle in their end of the ice, which eventually it's that third line that does get another very good scoring opportunity. Both Gord and Wright have very good chances to whack the puck in in front of the net as there's just chaos happening in the crease. Still, they're not able to. The Habs end up getting a power play in the final couple of minutes, which the Kraken kill off. But again, I think Montreal was happy just wasting two more minutes. And while Seattle presses again in the last few minutes, the game does end still 4-2. to two. A game which, again, outside of the absolutely spectacular Shane Wright goal and that whole crazy story that goes along with it was pretty much a disaster from the Kraken perspective. I guess maybe not quite as much of a disaster as the game previous to this one against the Panthers, especially considering the Kraken only allow 16 shots on goal. Again, three of them are actually four. There's one very good save that Jones makes here in the third, but four very good scoring opportunities, three of which end up in the back of the net. That having been said, there was a period of 44 minutes in this game spanning the entire second period and parts of the first and most of the third where Jones only made one save in 44 minutes. And it's the one save he makes midway through the second. So once again, for the second game in a row, from a shots on goal perspective, a very good game defensively for the Kraken. In fact, a spectacular one in this one with just those 16 shots, the second fewest allowed by the Kraken in a single game in their history. They had one against the Senators last season where they only allowed 14. But again, the quality of those 16 shots, or at least four of them anyway, was about as good as you're going to get from a Habs perspective. And they made three of them count with Jones not able to come up with more than one pretty good save. So at the very least, we'll call it a mixed bag defensively. And uh, probably the worst game we've seen from Jones in net for Seattle to this point in his Seattle career. Meanwhile, offensively for the Kraken, actually, I think it was a pretty good game. They get 13 shots on goal, which is pretty decent in its own right. But even with that, they created a number of very dangerous scoring opportunities. They just got shut down on quite a few of them by, again, a goaltender in Jake Allen that had the game of his season so far. And I suppose while we're on a more positive note for a little bit, it is certainly worth mentioning that the penalty kill that's been a problem as of late did go four for four on the night with kills. Granted, again, one of those was cut pretty short by that four and four opportunity that went disastrously for Seattle. Still though, a four for four night on the kill or three and a half for three and a half, whatever you want to call it. Definitely something the Kraken will happily take considering how things have been going there. And hopefully they can carry that off into these next few games in this road trip coming up. As far as stars are concerned in this game for the Kraken, I mean, the first one's pretty obvious. It clearly has to be Shane Wright getting that first ever NHL goal. And even as far as first NHL goals are concerned, it had a pretty good story that led up to it and then concluded with it. I mean, it's still just the end of the first chapter of Shane Wright's career, which I think based on tonight could be pretty bright going forward, even if he does end up going now to the World Juniors for a little bit. But 
I would imagine he's going to get a few more looks at the NHL level, even if he does go there and then return in January. Especially considering, again, even outside of that one goal, and the fact that it wasn't a fluky goal by any means, it was just a good play by Wright getting out in front of the net and making self available for that play. It was far from the only opportunity and maybe not even the best opportunity to score that he had in this game tonight. Even aside from goal opportunities, he also had that really nice pass that set up Gord for a solid opportunity to score in the third. I don't want to get carried away. It wasn't a perfect game for him by any means. He still does have some work to do, I think, as far as winning puck battles along the boards and getting pushed off the puck, but it's only eight games into his NHL career. And again, he's just an 18 year old in a league that most 18 year olds are far from ready to even think about playing in. So I think we can give him a pass there and just enjoy what this game was for him and what it could mean for his future with the team going forward. As far as the next two stars, the second star, I think I'll go. I could go with McCann with the second goal. He had a pretty good game, but kind of that weird change throws it off a bit. I think I'll end up going with Yanni Gord. Definitely a part of the penalty kill going four for four. Also definitely a part of that third line that was an absolute force in this game. Probably the best line, all things considered, for the Kraken. The second line with Beneers, again, was a very dangerous line whenever it was out on the ice. But I think I'll go Gord with the second star. And then the third star on the defensive end. Although, again, this game got a bit away from the Kraken thanks to defensive mistakes. He wasn't on the ice for any of them. And when he was on the ice, the Habs weren't getting anything done. That would be Vince Dunn. Who really, even outside of this game, where again, he had a pretty good, complete, all-around game, continues to have those complete all-around games, game after game for Seattle, showing himself to be one of the better defensemen that they have and well worth his spot on that top pair. Really, the only blight in this game for Dunn was one point where he put the puck clean over the boards at the other end of the ice from the Kraken end, and that did get him put in the box and sent the Habs to a power play. Of course, again, they don't end up scoring on it, so I guess no harm, no foul. But even outside of that, again, one of the better plays out on the ice for the Kraken. With that having said, let me know what you thought of this game down in the comments section below. I'm sure you've already mentioned how exciting it was to watch that Shane Wright goal. And if you were in the arena lucky enough to be watching it live, boy, was it ever loud, not just for the goal, but for the announcement of the goal a few minutes later. Anyway, with that, I think we will call it there. So if you have made it to this point, thank you very much for watching. If you did like or enjoy this video, there are buttons for that kind of stuff down below to support the channel. And until next time, where hopefully the Kraken can get off this just brutal two-game losing streak that they've been on. Hopefully in this road trip, they'll be going to DC next. Until then, stay safe out there, be good to each other. God bless and go Kraken.